Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10 again. Beginning at verse 6, then he answered and spake unto me, beginning at verse 6, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain. He shall bring forth a headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. His hands also shall finish it. Thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro. I want to talk to you from a subject today. Don't give up. Finish what you've started. Amen. So years earlier before the, the writing of the scripture, Babylon had destroyed Israel, right? And all of their cities, all of their walls, and all of the temples. So Zerubbabel was given the assignment by God to rebuild a ruinous heap. But the reality is, every one of us right now that's under the sound of this message, every single one of us have an assignment. Amen. Thank you for saying that. We have a specific assignment that we have to carry out, and because our assignments are different, nobody can finish what we started but us. Thank God for the amens. Praise God. Those that, those that, those that surrounded Zerubbabel were very excited. They were, they were excited. They were enthusiastic about the assignment that they had been given. And they go through the first stage of rebuilding the altar and the second stage of laying the foundation of the temple. But just after that second stage, which took, took approximately about two years, now the enemy shows up, opposition shows up, and the work stagnates. The local residents opposed the the building project and they discouraged the workers from participating in its completion. Zerubbabel started well but year after year for 17 years he could never finish what he started. He started well but now he had stagnated for two reasons. Reason number one is because of the opposition that came from the Samaritans. He had started well, but for 17 years, his work had stalled because the Samaritans had opposed the work that God had assigned him to do. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Just because you get a vision from God doesn't mean that the completion of that vision is going to be easy. Amen. 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 Sometimes we feel like because God said it, God's going to have our back. God's going to help us just to flow through this process. And the reality is God does have our back. God will help us to flow, but we will encounter opposition. Got to understand. We're never going to flow through anything except there be opposition. If you don't have any opposition, then it's probably not from God. But the problem, the second, the second problem they had is they started building their own houses. So now they've become distracted from the work because they're too busy facilitating their own needs. And now their needs became, came before the needs of the temple. Now, now that they've started building their own stuff, sometimes, wow, sometimes when you're, when you're stagnated by opposition, you find yourself starting to do other stuff. And the stuff that you're assigned to do doesn't get done because the opposition tells you you're not going to move. So you start doing your own things. And now you get so caught up in you until we forget about God. Thank God for those early amens. Sometimes we can, we can get absorbed with ourselves. I'm only talking to who I'm talking to. Sometimes we get so consumed with us until we become our own idol. And the work of the Lord goes unfinished because we encounter some opposition and the opposition has a second guessing whether or not it was even God. So because there's some things in my own life that I need to handle, I'm going to pay attention to me at the expense of the vision that God gave me. 
So some of us, some of us, sometimes we're in the same place with Zerubbabel. We have unfulfilled dreams. We have incomplete goals. We have dead visions and half-built projects. The foundation of the project has been laid, but now we're stuck. However, the word of the Lord is, it's time to finish what you started. Come on, somebody. It's time to get the work done. We can't give up. The message is, don't give up. Don't abort your dream. Don't abandon your goal. You started it, and now you have to finish. Amen. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't give up because you feel like there's no hope. Amen, somebody. Don't give up because no one encourages you. Oh, sometimes you feel like you're in this thing by yourself because somebody's not behind you doing this. You have a tendency. Don't give up because no one is encouraging you. Don't give up because no one appreciates your call. Preach to yourself, pastor. Don't give up because of stagnation. Sometimes just because the enemy's opposing you, it doesn't mean that it's God. If the enemy's opposing you, it's because it is God. Amen. Yeah, the enemy's not coming against anything that doesn't have an eternal value. If what you're doing is only for you, the enemy will let you flow with that. But when you start doing something and attaching God to it, the enemy says, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to let you just do that. Amen. So don't give up because of financial difficulties. Don't give up because of opposition and criticism. Wow. Don't give up because you're criticized. Don't give up because people say you're crazy for doing that. Don't give up because no one is, is patting you on the back and saying go forward. If you know that what God, what you're doing is something that God has told you to do, the only one that's required to fulfill it is you. It's not the applause of men. It's the obedience to do what God's told you to do. So it's time to finish what you started. Don't give up. So we, we said that the problem is, the problem is we get so geeked up at the beginning but then as time goes on and things get a little difficult, our enthusiasm kind of wanes. And, and the more the enemy comes against us, the more our enthusiasm just wanes. And you know what? At some point we say, well, maybe this wasn't God. Maybe I missed it. But if you're being opposed, chances are it was God. Yeah, so... So we've got to be determined that we're going to finish what we started, not by your power, not by your might, but by the spirit of the living God. No matter what I am going through, I am not giving up. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. I don't care what comes against me. I've got to finish what I started because the only one I'm going to answer to is God. I can't answer to you because you didn't call me. Amen. I've got to do what God has told me to do. Come on, you know how we said, I'm going to go by, i got to go by myself until you get by yourself. <laughs> and then you decide, I ain't going either. No, I can't. Mm -mm. We said all the time, I'm going to go if i got to go by myself. Okay, all right, yep. Mm -hmm. Sounds good in theory. The reason, the reason why people give up is because some do not know the process a vision. So let's talk about a vision. A vision is a God ordained assignment. Let's let's start there. Vision is God ordained. Vision is not I ate pizza last night and I went to bed on a full stomach and I started having all these crazy thoughts. No, vision is something that's ordained by God as an assignment. So the process is this. The process is number one, the birth of the vision. When you are filled with inspiration and passion to accomplish that which God has ordained you to do, right? So number two is, number two is the foundation. We're going to preach about it in a minute. Number two is the foundation. That is, that's where you give 
everything that you can, both spiritually and physically, into the birthing of that vision. When you know that you have an assignment that's ordained of God, now you've got to put your resources behind it to back it up to make sure it comes to fruition. God's not going to drop everything. Sometimes we've got to exert some energy. Sometimes we've got to roll up our sleeves. Sometimes we've got to give a little something in order to see this thing come to pass. Right. Number three is the death. The death is the stage that not too many like because the stage is where nothing seems to be working. Nothing, nothing seems to be happening. Number four is the rebirth of the vision when God steps in with his mighty hand and power and turns the whole situation around and gives you renewed strength. Amen. Amen. The reality is that the third stage is the stage of despair when you, when you feel like giving up. Mm -hmm. Feel like saying, you know what? What's the use? However, if you can endure, if you can endure and go through this stage, you're going to be victorious. Amen. If you get through stage three, you're going to be victorious. For a dream to be fulfilled, it first has to die. If you sow a seed, the seed will first of all die and germinate. Wait, if you, if when you sow a seed into the ground, you know what the scripture says? If, if it falls into the ground, the first thing it's going to do is die. Listen, if you don't want your seed to die, then you don't want it to produce fruit. Because the only way the seed is going to produce fruit is if the seed dies. So, so, so it's, it's, um, it's, that, it's that death stage. It's that stage where it looks like nothing is working. It looks like nothing is growing. It looks like nothing is coming forth, right? So, so you think about all of these. these that's why the Bible says all scripture, which was written aforetime, were written for our what? For our hope that, that through patience and comfort of the scripture, we might have hope. So when, I, when, I'm, when I'm believing God for vision and I'm looking at what's going on around me and it's like, God, I'm not seeing what you're saying. Then I've got to go to the word of God. The word. And I've got to. I've got to watch Moses uh -huh. when he has this big old vast sea in front of him and the enemy behind him. And the only thing he can probably think is, we're about to die. We're about to die. So God, I, I know I heard you, but I don't see anything that you said that I was going to see. And the reason that is, is because we're in stage three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep going. Mm. Keep going. So why do we have to, why do we have to have death vision? Because there's lessons to be learned yeah. from right. dead visions. The period of death is the period of waiting on the Lord for what you don't see. Amen. The period of death is the period of waiting on the Lord for what you don't see, Amen. even though you know that he said it. He said it. Amen. The period of death is the season you keep believing the Lord for what seems impossible. The period of death is when it looks like it's overwhelming, but you believe God anyway. <laughs> Y'all better come on with me. The season of death is when you realize that you don't have any power of your own to make anything work or to make your seed bring forth fruit when you want it to bring forth fruit. It's, 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 it's humbling when you want to see something and you can't see anything and you can't do anything to rush the process. Preach, preach. Let me tell you something. To everything there's a season and a time. And in this, in this stage, in this stage, there's nothing you can do to accelerate what God has put in his own time. Thank you, Lord. Boy, that's good preaching right there. Yes, it is. So, so you've got you to decide that in stage three, where it, looks, where it looks like things are dead, and the reason it looks like it's dead is because it is dead. But because it's dead, that means it's germinating. Oh, come on. And in God's time, it's going to produce more than you could have imagined. Ah, look at your neighbor and tell him, hang on in there. Don't give up. You've got to finish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.